Hello again and welcome back to the shop. If you're a pin turner, then you probably face the same dilemma that I do. Every time I cut a blank to make a pin, I end up having a little cutoff left over. Now I can't bring myself to throw these exotic woods away because they're so beautiful and I've been hanging on to them for a number of years and I have a very large collection of cutoffs. I was watching a Carl Jacobson video. Now if you don't subscribe to Carl Jacobson, you are missing out. I will include a link to his YouTube channel in the comments below. What Carl did in his video is he took a bolt, just like this one, a couple of fender washers and a nut, and he used it as a clamp to clamp small pieces together to make a blank. As after seeing that in the video, it immediately went through my mind that why could I not use that same technique for these pin cutoffs? And that's what this video is. I take a bunch of pin cutoffs and I make this beautiful purple heart and yellow heart segmented pin out of a bunch of tiny cutoffs. I have a very large number of pen cutoffs, both wood and also have quite a bit of acrylic. I never know what to do with these, so I thought tonight I might have a little fun. I have a few minutes. I'm going to try cutting some of them up, or actually, they're already pretty well cut up. I'm going to try getting a nice, flat, smooth edge on uh, some of these blanks and gluing them together to form some, some pin blanks. As I was getting ready to head over to the saw and start uh, squaring up some of these blanks, I remembered that this past year, my mother had stopped at a rummage sale and picked up a whole bunch of uh, wood laminate. So I think I'm gonna use some of this between my blanks to kind of give it a little more character, a little more fun. So I don't know, this is shaping up to be kind of a fun little project. Let's see what happens. I've got uh, some purple heart and some yellow heart cut and I've cut some oak laminate just some thin pieces to go between each of the sections I don't know if you've ever tried to drill this stuff before or cut it but man is it brittle <laughs> so what we're gonna do is get these glued up what my plan is is I got these quarter inch bolts and I drilled all of my holes at a quarter inch uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the pieces on these bolts I've got a nut and a washer fender washer for the other end I'll glue them up really good crank them down. I'm going to use this as my clamp to hold all these pieces together. Once everything's good and dry, I've got a quarter inch hole. I'll put it back on the drill press and I'll ream that hole out with my seven millimeter uh, drill bit and these blanks will be ready to glue up. So let's hope this works. I've got two blanks glued up. I decided just to go with two and see if it works or not. If it does, I'll try a few of the others. Uh, only the purple heart and the yellow heart matter. These other blocks down here are just spacers because my bolts, uh, they had a shaft without threads on them, you know, most of the way up. They only had a small section with threads. So I'm using those as kind of spacers to be able to crank it down tight. Uh, I slathered the glue on uh, between the blanks and the laminate, and I cranked them down tight, and we're going to let them dry overnight. And uh, tomorrow we'll see how they look. These blanks have been setting overnight. The glue should be plenty dry. So let's go ahead and take them apart and see if we can uh, trim them up and get them put on the lathe. I've got both of the blanks removed. Uh, I'm going to take them over to the drill press and get them drilled out to seven millimeters, get a couple of tubes glued in them, and then we'll be ready to turn them very shortly. Normally when I drill blanks uh, for tubes, I'll use my pin drilling vise, uh, but the problem is these are so oddly shaped, that, to put it nicely, that I can't get a good hold that is parallel uh, to the bit so that it will go straight down through the blanks. So what I'm going to try to do is just hold them by hand and run them up on the bit. Um, they should go through pretty easy because obviously the bolt trued up the hole uh, and the hole is one quarter inch which, which is the exact diameter of my mandrel and then this is a seven millimeter bit which is just one step up from that uh, well roughly one step up but so it should just be rimming the hole out so I think this should work so let me give it a try. All right, that went fairly smooth. Let me get a grip on this one. There we go. 
they actually went right up on the bit. I had to hold them pretty tight because there's a lot of torque uh, with the drill press, but they it, it was very smooth because the hole already existed. That one there looks like it needs a little bit of help on this side, so this one may be a little longer than my bit, so we'll just go ahead and ream it out a little bit. All right, both of them are done. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pop tubes in them. Uh, I'm not going to film putting the tubes in. All I do is uh, dampen the inside with a Q-tip, uh, run a little bit of Gorilla Glue, drill it all over the tubes, stick them up in there and let them dry. Um, I'll come back when the Gorilla Glue is good and dry, and we'll get these on the lathe, and I'll show you the turning. Before I start turning this blank, I think I'm going to take my scissors and just try to cut some of this extra little laminate out of the way. Uh, I'm afraid if I hit that with a tool and it chips, I would hope that the glue would be solid enough there wouldn't be an issue, but I, I don't want to take a chance at uh, messing up my blanks. So I'm just going to clip those off. And it's not perfect, but I'm just getting them down, down a little more so that they're not sticking out so much. The stuff cuts pretty easy. It's uh, so thin. I think this pen is turning out really beautiful, uh, just from going from a couple pieces of scrap to a, a pretty nice looking pen. Uh, I'm excited about it. I definitely will be making some more of these because I have a ton of scraps that I can use up. Uh, let's get this thing sanded down. I'm going to sand from 150 uh, down to about 400. I'm not going to make you watch the sanding process. It's pretty boring. If you're interested, I just simply take the paper and rub it back and forth like this and wipe the blank off with a little denatured alcohol at the end and that's the process so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I will come back when it's sanded and we'll put a little finish on it And here's the final pin. I think it turned out amazing. I am extremely happy with this process. I have never used the bolt before, uh, but I tell you what, I'm going to do quite a few more of these because there are no, I guess because with the fender washers on either end of the bolt, cranking it down so tight, there are no gaps between my segments. The pin looks beautiful. I have a ton of tiny cutoffs and I now have an outlet for for using them so all these years of keeping them I'm finally going to get rid of them. I'd like to thank everyone for joining me in the shop today. This was a fun project to make. I learned so much while doing this and I found a great outlet for all of my scrap pieces. I'm going to have a lot of fun with this over the next couple of months. If you like what you saw today consider giving me a thumbs up. If you really like what you saw 
share this video with your friends. If you're not a subscriber, I invite you to click that subscribe button and all of my future videos will be brought straight into your YouTube subscription feed. If you're on Facebook, consider liking my page. Search for RJB Woodturner. It's kind of a behind the scenes look at what goes on in my shop. This pin, for example, I took photos all along the way and left comments about what I was working on. So if you're following me on Facebook, you'll see many of my projects prior to them becoming videos. As always, I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon. Have a great day.